My name is Zarina Gakkaeva. I'm from Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology. And today I'll try to uh, talk a little bit about the charge transport in uh, different biomaterials and the influence water and uh, aqueous cations uh, have on the charge transport. Uh, so the motivation of uh, this study uh, lies in the field of bioelectronics and green electronics, uh, the rapidly evolving areas of knowledge where the intense process of the intense search of uh, biodegradable materials goes. Uh, and uh, with the good uh, conductive characteristics. Uh, and uh, while searching the appropriate uh, conductive materials within some uh, biological objects, such as uh, biological polymers or conductive bacteria, etc., uh, a few problems rise. Uh, the, <clears throat> the problems are in the uh, questions of charge transport, uh, because there are different types of charge transport in biological materials, <clears throat> and different types of charge carriers, such as ions, protons, and electrons. And uh, the main uh, thing the researchers have to deal with is the influence of water on uh, every type of the transport. Uh, because water is uh, inevitable for functioning of, of every biological material, one should take into account uh, its influence uh, either on ions or on protons and electrons, uh, charge transport such as diffusion or hopping or as in case of protons, Grotgus mechanism shown here. Uh, in biological materials, water is not the same thing that the water in the glass. So it usually exists in different bound states. Um, water molecules form hydration shells and uh, hydration networks within the bulk of the biological material. Uh, and while protonated, uh, water molecules form uh, different proton, uh, proton, uh, different clusters, uh, and different proton cation, protonic species, such as hydronium, uh, or zundel cation, or eigen cation, etc., etc. And these cations are regarded to be the major participants of charge, pro charge transport processes. Uh, in various condensed media, including biological materials. Uh, in the spectra, in the broadband dielectric spectra, uh, water manifests itself as uh, debiralization uh, in the gigahertz, terahertz frequency range. Uh, with the frequency lowering while the boundness of water uh, increased. So uh, we had three different biological samples. Uh, the first one was the extracellular matrix and filaments of the electrogenic bacteria Shivanellanidensis. Here on the left, you can see this bacteria. Uh, these threads are the extracellular matrix and filaments. These are the conductive uh, ones. Uh, and uh, while the, uh, this matrix uh, consists of uh, membrane and uh, different uh, proteins, uh, usually cytochrome type proteins, uh, we also chose uh, uh, cytochrome C protein as our second object for investigation uh, because it resembled in, in the structure and uh, anything the cytochromes of the extracellular matrix. Uh, and the last one object was the bovine serum albumin. This, was, this is a protein which has nothing in common uh, with the structure of cytochromes. Uh, 
or of uh, extracellular matrix and filaments. And it, uh, it, it wasn't uh, expected uh, the conductivity in this protein. Uh, so we uh, saw the uh, conductivity in uh, EMF, uh, here this shoulder in the low frequency part of spectra uh, shows the existence of Drude type uh, conductivity in uh, EMF, uh, the same was observed by but lower uh, orders of magnitude lower uh, in the cytochrome C while no uh, conductivity was observed in BSA. And this interestingly correlated with uh, the Debye response of bound water in the terahertz frequency range. Here in the left, you can see uh, the Debye relaxation in EMF and in cytochrome while there is no one in BSA. Uh, and uh, the existence of conductivity also correlated with the existence of translational and librational lines of water molecules uh, in the infrared region at about 200 uh, and 600 of reciprocal centimeters. Uh, so uh, this gave us an, an idea of the correlation between uh, bound water response and uh, charge transport existence in our samples. However, the exact ways in which water affects conductivity uh, in these materials, as well as the possible influence of aqueous cations, which are formed uh, from water molecules, uh, were not observed. And uh, so within the framework of current study, we took uh, our three biological systems uh, and analyzed the infrared transmissivity spectra in order to investigate the connection between the presence of aqueous cations uh, and the charge transport mechanisms in them. Uh, this was done by means of Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy with uh, vertex spectrometer. Uh, the terahertz results were obtained using time demand, time demand spectrometers. Uh, so moving on to the results, here you can see the infrared spectra of uh, imaginary part of dielectric permittivity. Uh, it was uh, fitted using the Lorentz model. And while not every single infrared line was of interest, and uh, uh, the research was complicated by the existence of uh, strong lines of, for example, uh, amides uh, or some carboxyl group vibrations, which are characteristic for proteins and biological samples. There were several lines uh, which uh, which we could attribute to the uh, aqueous cations response. So uh, the first bunch of lines uh, is connected with the response of hydronium ions. Uh, these are uh, vibration inversion mode at about 524 centimeters. Um, and uh, at about 1,000 centimeters, uh, as well as uh, stretching of the oxygen-hydrogen bond in the hydronium ion uh, near 2,700 reciprocal centimeters. Uh, uh, the interesting it's interesting to note that uh, in EMF, where it was the most uh, uh, levels of conductivity, um, the intens intensity, the strength of these peaks were the, the most also. Uh, another bunch of lines uh, we attributed to the Tsundil cation response. Uh, located uh, at uh, 320 centimeters and 
uh, extra vibrations uh, near 1000 uh, centimeters. Uh, although it's very yeah, well, uh, it, there are not only the uh, these lines uh, which attribute to response of aqueous cations. Uh, however, the um, analysis of them is complicated uh, by the location and overlapping with the molds of protein characteristic features. So here you can see these lines in the table. And uh, once again, it's interesting to note that in uh, EMF, uh, which is the most conductive material, the response was orders of magnitude higher than in cytochrome or in BSA. Uh, uh, further, uh, one interesting feature was observed uh, with the translational and librational uh, vibrations in the infrared spectra. Uh, because uh, the presence of the translational, uh, translational vibrations of water molecules um, and the dominance of translations over librations uh, uh, speaks about the presence of excess protons in the material. And again, in EMF and cytochrome, uh, we could see that the translational vibrations are uh, more dominant than librations. And the opposite situation was uh, observed for BSA protein. Mm. Again, speaking that uh, about the fact that in EMF and cytochrome, the number of excess protons is more is the biggest one. Uh, so, ending the spectral analysis, a few words should be said about uh, the broad intense band in at about five, 50 reciprocal centimeters. So uh, while there are several hypotheses about the, its origin, including one relating this band to long range protein vibrations, uh, there is another one according to which this band might be a spectral feature of uh, oxygen bending mode of polygonal water clusters, which form at the surfaces uh, of different proteins. However, the precise determination of this band uh, nature requires more research. Uh, so this brought us to the conclusions that uh, the that one can uh, use the infrared spectra uh, uh, for uh, searching the presence of excess protons in the materials, in the biological materials. And uh, the proton concentration was uh, orders of magnitude high, higher in EMF samples uh, than in cytochrome or in BSA. And this correlated with the transport characteristics of the samples, which we obtained, had obtained in our previous studies, uh, which says that uh, uh, hydronium and sundial cation could be the main participants of charge transport process. Uh, however, uh, this need to be proven with more research, uh, so the work continues uh, on charge transport mechanisms in biological materials. Uh, thank you for your attention. Well, thank you very much for your presentation.